Hello, welcome again to Fairtex Power Radio. I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Molero. And we are the, the Fairtex, Fairtex guys. guys. Dedicated now to the proposition of holding the politicians' feet to the fire mm. and, and pointing out the fact that what they are saying they want to do and what they are proposing to do really don't match up too well. No, they're two, two different things. Uh, they say they're going to reform the tax code. Well, look up reform in the dictionary. And what they're proposing is not reform. They're just messing around with the same tax code. Uh, Yes, what they're doing, you know, reducing the rates, uh, at least that's what they're talking about right now. As of this uh, recording, it hasn't even a bill in Congress. But what they've been talking about in this plan, yeah, it'll help. But for how long? I mean, for how long before the lobbyists uh, kick into gear again? All right. Well, what we'd like to concentrate on today, uh, after we give you our email address, thefairtaxguys at gmail.com, and of course, encourage you to go to our Facebook page and like that, and hopefully we'll have another Facebook Live to talk about here before too much longer. Those are fun. I enjoy doing those. Yes, they're a lot of fun, and time flies. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's, what we want to do today, again, is something we have done in the past, we've done a lot of this before, is try to encourage folks to get out there and put pressure on the Congress critters, their personal representatives, because, you know, the Congress is always taking vacations, and they're always coming back home, and a lot of times they have these town halls, sometimes in person and sometimes over the telephone, and sometimes uh, guys like Ted Yoho also do Facebook Live events as well. Mm -hmm. So there, there are plenty of opportunities to, to contact your congressperson, and we need to f- make sure that those Congress critters understand that we, the people out here, know what the fair tax is all about. You work for us, buddy. You need to get behind this thing. So how can we pers- persuade our Congress critters to, to start talking about the thing that for some deep, dark, mysterious reason that I don't understand yet, there, uh, there, this nobody's talking about right now? Yeah, it, does, it doesn't seem that the uh, the Inside the Beltway group uh, wants to talk about real tax reform, which is the fair tax, all right? Real tax reform means you get rid of the income tax altogether along with the IRS and replace it with a sales tax like a number of our states are doing, you know, and we happen to be lucky enough to be in one of them, Florida where we have a sales tax and no income tax. Real reform means get rid of the income tax and replace it with a consumption tax, a sales tax. Life would be so much easier. Uh, Mm -hmm. That's real reform. Absolutely. For some reason, the the people inside the Beltway, they know about the fair tax, but they're just, it's kind of like hush-hush up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got to bring this to the forefront in in, in their thinking. Because really, the little catchphrase that we use at the end of every program, once you understand it, you'll demand it. It's more than just a little catchphrase. That is the truth. Yeah. Because I don't know anybody of any political affiliation or any political persuasion that would not like to have more money in their pocket. The fair tax gets rid of withholding. You bring home your full income tax, bring home your full paycheck with no income tax deductions, no tax returns, to heck with this little postcard thing, that's going to devolve back into what we've got. So who would not like no income tax returns whatsoever? The government has no business knowing what's in your personal finances. You get a tax refund every month. There is so much to go over. And if you're going to be in one of these little town hall situations, you got to kind of pick and choose one or two of these little points. Yeah, that's you, right. There, there's so much there that you can nail them on that, that we can't get over everything. So I I would think that if we could use their own words, and the two things that pop out to me that the politicians are saying most about what they want to accomplish with tax reform, one, simplify the tax code. Yep. Two, bring down the corporate rate so that uh, American business is competitive in the global market. Point out to them, simplify the tax code. I double dog dare any of those politicians <laughs> to say that I can get my proposal in 133 pages, most of which refers to code that's all going to be repealed. It does not take 133 pages to describe how the fair tax works. If you want to talk about simplicity, figure out how you can get it in less than 133 pages, zero pages of instructions on how to comply with it. <laughs> yeah. And, and look, at the, look at the deer in the headlights look in their eyes you're going to get if you bring that up to them. Yeah, and Bob is right. You you need to limit yourself to one or two concepts of the fair tax. In a in a, a setting such as a town hall, or even if you're writing a letter to the editor or a letter to your congressman or senators, all right, you can't cover the entire fair tax. So don't try to. 
All right. Get one particular something that really resonates with you. Uh, one way to do this is you go to bigsolution.org, and because there's a list of, of very important issues, and somebody is going to find one of those that really resonates with them, and then learn about it. Do your homework so you can uh, present yourself intelligently and concentrate on that one or maybe two issues. Uh, like I said, don't try to cover the entire fair tax because you'll lose the audience. You have, at a town hall, you have a few seconds to make a really good impression. So start off big, do your homework first, and limit yourself to uh, one or two issues. Um, okay. Practice what you're going to say. You know, I mean, maybe, you know, I don't know if you have to sit in front of a mirror, but uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, write it down or something. Uh, pretend you're uh, uh, writing a letter to the editor where you're limited to under 300 words. So you have to be concise. Uh, try that. Uh, that. That'll that help. But uh, do your homework and make sure uh, you know exactly what you're talking about. And don't go off on a tangent. And then, and then uh, try to nail down your congressman for you know what if if they are a co-sponsor thank them uh, i go to my congressman's uh, town halls whenever i can and i thank him for being a co-sponsor and then on top of that i ask well what's happening in this respect and so forth and i'm lucky enough to have a a, a congressman who is a co-sponsor and uh, he will go off uh, and talk about some aspect of the tax code or what's happening in in uh in Washington and why he is a co-sponsor of the fair tax. Mm -hmm. if, if Now, Bob has a different situation here. Uh, unfortunately, my guy is just your uh, stereotypical swamp creature who talks out of both sides of his mouth and never says anything to anybody for fear of losing a vote. And that, that's a big thing here because the fair tax is never going to succeed until we can make it a winning campaign issue to be in favor of it. Yeah. That's right. And so that that's, again, that's why we're trying to educate so many people, because the more people hear about the fair tax and understand it, it's true. Once you understand it, you'll demand it. Uh, that's And the, your congressperson is the person from whom you must demand it. Yeah, there, there are so many times when we've done presentations for people, and people have heard it for the first time, and after a couple hours of explaining how the fair tax will work and so forth, and people are shaking their heads saying, why aren't we doing this? Yeah, my mother's reaction exactly when I gave her the book and explained it to her. Yeah. Why, why aren't we doing this? Well, yeah. the ans answer is because the lobbyists and politicians didn't write it. Yeah, that's right. Again, this is the only tax reform plan out there. The fair tax is the only tax reform plan out there that was not written by politicians, that has $20 million of privately funded research behind it to make sure it works. It was not written by lobbyists. And you can guarantee, oh, tell you what, let me, while we're here talking about lobbyists, we've been getting, keeping track of how many taxes, uh, changes to the tax code have oh. been made in this Congress. And we're almost to a magic figure now. Yeah. We, looked, we looked this morning, congress.gov, searched on the string Internal Revenue Code to find all of the instances where people wanting to change the Internal Revenue Code. You have to put that in quotes. Yes, and you know how many changes there are now proposed to the Internal Revenue Code in this Congress together? 999. One more, and we're into four figures. And that's just since January, folks. Because the 115th Congress started in January. You know, there's a new Congress every two years. Yeah, and, and I, I, Ron, I, I double-dog dare you to, uh, to, <laughs> un, to understand this one. This is H.R. 3892 that was uh, introduced uh, on the 28th of September uh, by Jackie Walorski from uh, Indiana. H.R. 3892 is a proposal to amend the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 to provide an exception for certain spun-off voluntary employees beneficiary associations to the limitation on the exemption from the tax on unrelated business taxable income or amount set aside for qualified benefits. I <laughs> dare you to explain that one to me. Yeah, anybody, if you know what that means, uh, please write us uh, at uh, thefairtaxguys at gmail.com <laughs> because uh, it, I'm sorry, uh, you know, I, I do have a graduate degree in education, and I can't figure that one out. That's how the tax code gets to be 75,000 pages yeah. long. <laughs> yeah, because if that is passed, now, a lot of these proposals, most of these proposals will not become law, but some of them will. And for something, now, that was just the title. Believe it or not, what Bob read was just the title of that bill. 
Then you go into the text of the thing, and if that is passed and becomes part of the tax code, it's going to add what? A couple dozen, couple hundred more pages that you and I are all responsible for? Uh, it, you know, it's yeah, a little nuts. That brings back the primary point that we were talking about. Use these politicians' own words against them. All right. Stand up in a town hall and say, listen, you and your party, if this is a Republican guy especially, you tell them your party has come out and your Ways and Means chairman and your president have come out and said that one of their primary goals for tax reform is to simplify the tax code. Now, explain to me how that is simplifying the tax code. Can you figure that out? And, and, and say, why don't you do the fair tax if you want to do simplicity? That's there. Uh, you know, at these town halls, you, you have to be respectful, okay? Absolutely. Uh, but you can be assertive. You can be respectful and be assertive at the same time. And you have to put the congressman or woman on the spot, all right? You have to demand, for instance... Bob is frequently saying, what is it about the IRS that you love so much? You know, and let him let him try to why, wiggle out of that one. Why do you want to keep it? Yeah. Well, why keep an agency that you that we don't need? Yeah. Well, that people well, hate. Not only <laughs> that is, is inefficient. <laughs> it's very inefficient and it comp- and it's allowed by Congress to completely ignore the Bill of Rights. Remember the Bill of Rights? Remember what you learned in grade school about the Constitution and the uh, and the 10 amendments after the Constitution was ratified? <laughs> the Bill of Rights? Eh, that's out the window with the IRS. They don't, they don't worry about this due process. They don't care about uh, they don't care about unreasonable search and seizure, they're the IRS. They Mm -hmm. don't care about that stuff. Unfortunately, most people do not experience the horror stories that some people do. Yeah. So the fact that it it is an intrusive, abusive agency really doesn't ring with a lot of folks. But but hit them on the simplicity thing. If you want to simplify the tax code, why are you not in favor of this 133-page bill? Why not? Just ask them that and see what they get. Yep. And uh, when they start talking about, well, they're going to they're going to improve things for the average American by reducing the tax rates. Well, let's let uh, let's uh, go a little bit further than reducing the tax rates. Let's eliminate the tax rates. Yes. And and I I, I was watching the news earlier today and somebody keeps saying you keep hearing this phrase over and over again. We've got to fix it so people can keep more of their money. (laughs) <laughs> How many people are saying that on television? I, I've heard at least two or three dozen of them. We need to do this so it's the right thing to let people keep more of what they earn. Why don't you let people keep all of what they earn? Uh-huh. That's what the fair tax does. The uh, fair tax, again, eliminates the income tax. It's a consumption tax. You pay anonymously at the cash register when you buy things. The, the government has no clue who's paying it. They just know you know that it's being collected. But if you want to let people keep more of what they earn eliminate federal withholding yeah. get rid of the income tax get rid of the federal withholding which which where the government is actually telling folks i am your highest spending priority mm-hmm. you will pay me before you support your family which is another yeah. tangent we can go off on and the fair tax also gets rid of the payroll taxes that support uh, social security and medicare does not get rid of those programs it actually says in the bill that a given percentage of the fair tax revenue must go to those two programs it changes the funding model it does not get rid of the programs like some people will tell you but again if you want people to keep more of what they're earned quit taking it away from them before they even get it yeah that's right that that is so uh, you know again i've said this before one of the founding principles of this country was that the individual is sovereign We don't do kings and queens and uh, monarchy and things like that in this country. We never have. And this was the first country on the planet to recognize the individual as a sovereign entity. And then the 16th Amendment came along and just kind of ignored that whole concept because the 16th Amendment allows the government to be a higher priority than, than you. It, it allows the government to take a portion of your hard work and ingenuity, your hours, your labor, and so forth. Well, that was 
that was completely antithetical to, to the, the f- framers of the Constitution. That, that, that just turned on the light bulb. Why don't you ask your congressperson, which is a higher spending priority, your family or the government? Ooh, that's a good one, And Bob. see what he says. Yeah. And if he says, well, of course, feeding your family. So why are you taking money from my paycheck before, <laughs> before I, get, I get it to feed my family? Get rid of it. Yeah. The fair tax is the only tax reform proposal that does that. Why don't you support it? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> excuse me. And, and uh, you know, you know what you're going to find would be fun. when when you're at a town hall and I'm you going bring to do up that. The f- that. I'm going to use that one next time I go to a town that's, hall. You that's better a believe great it. Great idea. See, this is spur of the moment radio here. You know, it just pops into his head, and I, th- I think that's a dandy idea. Um, but you're also going to find that when you mention something about the fair tax, you're going to have help in the room. You're going to have other citizens there that have heard about the fair tax and start to say, yeah, yeah, what about that? Why aren't you, why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you co-sponsoring the fair tax? And you're going to get some more people on, on, your, uh, on your side. And then if you get some people that are not familiar with it, well, you know how to turn them on to it. Mm-hmm. Fair Tax Power Radio. That's Absolutely. one way. Absolutely. That's a good way to do it. Yep. Uh, BigSolution.org if you want to get involved. FairTax.org has got a lot of educational resources. Yep. The FAQ, who uh, frequently ask questions about the Fair Tax. So get educated at FairTax.org. Get involved at BigSolution.org. And always tell your friends and family to listen to Fair Tax Power Radio. Absolutely. You could even do the really old-fashioned thing and read a book about it. What do you think about that? Oh, mercy. Yeah. <laughs> I would suggest there's a one that uh, Neil Board and John Linder wrote. Actually, they wrote two of them. And there's one by Kenneth Hoagland that's pretty good, too. So go out to your bookseller, be it online or, or brick and mortar, and, and check out these fair tax books as well. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're, they have an unusual title. They're called The Fair Tax Book. Yeah, I'm waiting for Jade Wally to write a book. Now, that, that uh, would be a good You know, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Bob is referring to the, the fellow who is a CPA from Colorado that we interviewed a couple episodes ago. And uh, yeah, he, this guy he, he's has probably come listening along. here. Hi, Jade. But we'll <laughs> I believe I believe he just learned about the fair tax earlier this year. He did, and he really is an expert. That guy. It, it's I'm impressed with how much he's learned. Mm-hmm. So it, doing a book about it, it that, I think that's entirely possible. Absolutely. But getting back to our theme of how, how do we deal with the Congress critters? Ask them why why they uh, support the government being a higher priority than your family. Ask them why they don't support the fair tax if their goal is simply. Simplicity. And the other big one they're talking about, we've got the highest corporate tax rate in the world. We need to bring that down to make American businesses competitive. Uh, if 20% is better than 35, I would think zero is better than 35. Why don't you support that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and don't fall, you know, if somebody says, oh, well, the corporations have to pay their fair share. Remember, it's a cost of doing business, whatever it is, whether it's their raw materials, their, their help, their labor force, whatever it is, or taxes. That is a cost of doing business. It gets rolled into the price of their product or service, and you and I pay for that. So don't let them, don't let somebody else or a congressman saying that the corporations have to pay their fair share because we pay their fair share. We, the consumer. The corporations pass that expense on to their customers. Uh, They also will pass it on to their employees. They've got less money to give benefits with or their shareholders if it's a public company. Their dividends are lower because they've got to do this out. And, of course, the compliance costs in, in a lot of cases dwarf the actual tax liability. Oh yeah, especially for small companies. You know, the big companies, the very the mega corporations, they don't really mind this tax code because they can afford lobbyists and they can afford to get a bill introduced to Congress and have it passed that benefits them specifically. Small businesses like my wife and I ran can't do that. We are subject to the whims of Congress. So, um, uh, small businesses, this is a big deal for them. This would help them so much. And small businesses create 70% of the jobs in this country. So, yes, we need to help the small businesses. Yes, so ask your Congress critter if a reduction down to, well, I think the president originally wanted 15, but now they're floating around 20% as as the figure that's more likely to be for the corporate tax. If going down to 20% is good, why is not going down to zero better? Yep. Yeah, it's, and, and uh, see what they get. And of course, you, you got to be ready with that. Well, corporations just pass the cost of their tax liability and compliance costs onto the consumers anyway. So don't don't give me this. They got to pay their fair share thing because that does not reduce. It probably reduces the taxes 
that an individual has to pay, but it does not reduce the number of dollars that have to come out of your pocket because you're paying higher prices That's right. to these corporations that are just that are doing what they do with all of their costs of doing business. Pass it on down the line. The final consumer ends up paying it all anyway. So don't let anybody get away with that. Uh, corporations have to pay their fair share. Now, another thing about town halls, whether it's a, a live town hall or a tele town hall or whatever, don't don't be a, a you know a, a one one hit one hit wonder. That's what I'm trying to say. Show up once a year and that's it. Uh, you might want to coordinate with some friends and neighbors. Look, we'll go. I'll say something at this town hall. And you need to speak up about the fair tax at the next town hall and make sure that there's always somebody bringing up the fair tax at every single town hall that you attend with with your congressman or congresswoman. Yeah, and that, that's a good point because if the congressperson sees the same person showing up all the time, uh, that will not have as big effect as if he sees five different people at five different areas. If you see five different people at five different town halls, that will solidify in his or her mind that, hey, this thing has got some pretty widespread support. And we all know that the only thing that – two things that Congress people care most about is getting elected and getting reelected. Yeah. <laughs> so if I've got more people, if they, if they have the perception that more people are out there that want this thing, like this thing, and want them to support it, uh, then, then you know, you go to one, get your friends to go to another one, and uh, you know, try to get as many people as possible out there talking about the fair tax to your Congress critters, and uh, and uh, we'll get through it eventually. We've been at it for twenty years. We are not going to give up on this thing. Oh, that's right. And another good way to contact your congressmen and your senators is through PopVox, P O P V O X, PopVox dot com. If you have not logged on to that. Uh, you create your own account by giving it your name and your address. It needs your address because then it knows what congressional district you're in and who your representative is and who your two senators are. And then you can log in and weigh in on any pending legislation there is. And we suggest you go to H.R. 25 and S. 18, which is the companion legislation in the Senate. You know, H.R. 25 has been stable throughout the entire history of the fair tax being in the uh, Congress. In the, the House. The, uh, yeah, in the House, that one changes. The Senate bill number will change from, from, uh, from Congress yeah. to Congress. Yeah. It, it's currently 18. It may be something different in the next one. Of course, the next one's a couple of years off. Yeah. A year and a half or maybe a year or so off. But uh, be, be advised that the Senate bill number may change. The House bill has always in the past been H.R. 25, and it's reasonable to think that that will continue in the future. So you can do this. You can attend the, the town halls uh, or if there's a tele town hall. I mean, my wife and I will be sitting watching TV in the evening. The phone rings and uh, hi, uh, it's Congressman Yoho and I'm um, having a tele town hall. One thing I've learned about this is when you get on, if you decide to listen, and we encourage you to do so, it tells you if you want to ask a question, push, I don't know, it's zero or whatever it is, do it right away. As soon as you pick up that phone and it's a tele town hall and you're going to talk to your congressman or you're going to listen to your congressman, push that button for putting a question because I learned this the hard way. I, it took me a few minutes to decide, uh, yeah, I think I better say something. Well, by the time I pushed the button, I was way down in the queue, and I never got a chance to, to ask my question on the tele town hall. Um, so you can do tele town halls, live town halls. You can write to your congressmen and senators. You can get onto Pop Fox, and you can get all your friends and neighbors. And this is what it's going to take to get this done. A lot of people, all right, well, you know, it's not like half of the population of the country, but a good significant portion constantly hammering Congress over and over again. And don't give up. Don't ever give up. Uh, constantly contacting your congressmen and senators, talking about the fair tax. Why aren't you doing this? If they're not a co-sponsor, you know, tell them you expect them to co-sponsor. Why aren't they co-sponsoring? If they are a co-sponsor, thank them for doing so and encourage them to get other people, you know, other congressmen on board. All right, so, we've gone through almost an entire program here. We haven't mentioned evasion yet. We got to hit them with that. Well, yeah. A the, ask, ask your congressperson what does your tax reform plan do to address evasion? 
Yeah, you, you, <laughs> and you, you probably will get next question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Bob is absolutely right. They just uh, and Steve Hayes has mentioned this. He's the president of our national group, and he's also a board member of our group here in Florida. Um, they talk about evasion. We've got a study. I mean, a, a, a scholarly study that was finished, I think, in March of this year, and it was published, and you can find it on fairtax.org. Um, this, this study by a, a, a professor in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, evasion is a horrible problem. It's going to cause the income tax to eventually implode under its own weight. And it's costing every household in this country $5,365 this year. That's the forecast. And that doesn't mean your taxes are that much higher. That means your taxes plus what you pay increased, uh, increased cost for goods and services all of that evaded tax uh, tax money is showing up in your tax bill and your bill for everything you purchase. So it's not a good situation, and it's not going to get better. Yeah, it's actually going to get worse. Fewer and fewer people are working a traditional job and getting a W-2. they got more and more of that, uh, what Randy Fisher calls the gig economy. You get yeah. a gig to do this and a gig to do that and whatever. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times that that is uh, not <laughs> earned in a way that it's reportable to the IRS. And, and that's, again, a big flaw with the income tax. It's so easy to evade. If, yeah. if, if I don't tell them about this money, I don't have to pay taxes on it. Should I tell them or not? Well, I know what the answer to that 99% of the time is going to be. And people don't like the income tax. Like I said, it runs counter to the founding of this uh, this uh, country. So people don't like it naturally. So they, unfortunately, they justify uh, evading it. That's not good for the rest of us, but it's a fact of life. And with a, with a consumption tax like the sales tax, how do you evade that? You how don't. Do you... It's built into the price of everything you buy. Yeah. I mean, how do you go into one of these big box stores and buy a new TV and say, oh, by the way, I don't want to pay the, the sales tax on this? Uh-uh. <laughs> Good not, luck with that. Not going to work. I've seen the, the study that we looked at earlier says the evasion rate for a consumption tax like the fair tax would be, you know, 5% or less compared to 20 some for an income tax. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I ask, ask again, we've got to wrap this up here in just a second, but we do. We encourage you to go to your town halls, engage with your Congress critters. Ask them, you know, if you're for simplicity, why are you not for the fair tax? If you think that feeding your family is a higher priority than feeding the government, how come you're not for the fair tax? If you want to make America more competitive on the global market by reducing the uh, corporate income tax rate, why are you not for the fair tax that reduces it to zero? And, And just ask them, those folks. And again, be polite, be considerate. You know, be, but be assertive. Be, but be assertive. Don't yep. don't don't take a bunch of political BS for an answer, because that's what you're likely to get from a lot of those folks anyway. And, and don't take no for an answer, even if Congress manages to pass some kind of tax bill this year. That's not the end of it. That not by a long shot. That's not the end of it. We will continue with this fair tax until it's passed, because it is the best thing for this country. It's not the best thing for career politicians, but it's the best thing for the citizens of this country. Yes, so, but the current tax reform is the uh, full employment act for tax lobbyists of 2017 or yeah. something like that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what we're dealing with, folks. And, and that's kind of what Stuart Varney was saying when he was talking to, uh, to, to Steve, Steve Hayes, Hayes the other yeah. day. You know, that, that's pie in the sky. We're never going to get it. Let's concentrate on what we can get now. That's always like, when are you going to start your diet? Tomorrow. You know, <laughs> the right day to start it never comes. The right day to put in the fair tax never comes in these politicians' eyes. So we've got to hold their feet to the fire and do that. <laughs> and we are just about out of time here on Fair Tax Power Radio. Again, our email address is thefairtaxguys at gmail.com. We do have a Facebook page. We would like to have your uh, comments and questions and interaction there as well. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on Facebook Live here before too much longer. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's good. How much time we got? About 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, remember, you can go shopping and support the Fair Tax if you go to fairtaxrewards.com. We always encourage buy local, but if you have to buy something online, go to fairtaxrewards.com. Start a free account with them and do your shopping through that website. And whatever you purchase, you'll get a stipend and the Americans for Fair Taxation will get a stipend too. Okay, that's it. All the time for this edition of Fair Tax Power Radio. Thank you for being with us. I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Molero. We are the Fair Tax Guys. Again, reminding you that the Fair Tax is America's big solution. And once you understand it, you'll demand it. Fair tax is coming. Don't